So based on this in insight, we've developed and tested a program for the farmers. And the program is to give them a very small incentive to buy fertilizer right after harvest when they still want to do it, rather than to wait until later. So this program is, uh, we've, we've named it SAFI, for Saver Saving and Fertilizer Initiative, but SAFI also means pure in Swahili. And the program is very simple. It's implemented by field officer of an NGO in Kenya. And they visit the farmers right, right after the harvest, and they tell them, hey, would you like to buy fertilizer today at the full market price? If you do, we will deliver it to you for free. So it's a small cost. It's a small benefit. It's not a full subsidy, but it's a small benefit. In order to test uh, this program, what we've done is we've, we've taken a group of farmers, about 1,000 farmers, which we've randomly selected into uh, three groups. There are also other groups that I'm not showing you, actually, but this is the three main group. Uh, the group, the most to the right, the most to the right is a control group, so we did nothing special. And in this season, 30% of them uh, used fertilizer. This group is a SAFI group, so all we did with this group is right after harvest, we told them, if you buy it today, we'll deliver it to you for free. And the uh, use of fertilizer went from 30% to 51%. And in the middle, you see this 50% uh, subsidy. The in it also, of course, it's a 50% subsidy, so a big subsidy, but at the time where people need it. So too late from the perspective of the agent. And you can see that this increased the rate of fertilizer use from 30% to 43%, but it's less than the 51% that the SAFI program does. So take a mini subsidy, maybe that corresponds to a few percentage points off for the farmer, and this has more of an effect than a big subsidy at the wrong time. So this is an example which is interesting because it helps us go get away from the big debate, should we subsidize, not subsidize. This type of small a small subsidy is not going to distort the decision of anybody who was not planning to use fertilizer anyway. Only people who would like to use fertilizer, who think it's appropriate for them, will take advantage of this program. The others will not, because the benefits is too small. So this is an example where it seems that there was a $100 bill lying on the floor. And this $100 bill, someone had to identify uh, this uh, possibility and help uh, design this, this structure. Another interesting example of that is microcredit. Microcredit succeeded uh, uh, or took, uh, started after the failure of uh, big government sponsored lending programs. And in the 70s, there was these big programs and they led to massive rent seeking and no repayment. And so the conclusion was oh, lending to the poor is not possible. Uh, first, they don't have, uh, the, the loans are small, so the interest rate needs to be high, but the poor don't have such high uh, rates of return opportunities, so they don't really, they cannot sustain those loans, and in any case, there is too much moral hazard and adverse selection and everything. And Yunus did design an institution that made lending to the poor possible, exploiting social capital, dynamic incentive, and regular meetings. I think the jury is still completely out on whether microcredit is good for the poor or not, but where it's not out is that it is possible to lend to the poor in very, very large number. Microcredit today lead, uh, reach millions of people. So these two examples, I think, suggest that economic innovation is possible. And it does require a certain amount of ingenuity, a certain amount of knowledge that progressively economists have, have developed as a as a profession, we're all developing, so we're standing on the shoulder of each other in a sense. And it does require some luck, because not everything works. The, micro, the UNOS program only worked after years of experimenting and trying to find a way. So I don't think we should ever invent it that uh, everything has, we should never assume that everything has been invented already. There is still room for uh, mechanism design, and, uh, and, and not necessarily very sophisticated one can really improve, improve things. Now, if we admit that, if we admit that as economists, we can sometimes, in our, our areas of expertise, maybe 
things having to do with incentives, things having to do with uh, information, things having to do with uh, now the interplay of economics and psychology, which we understand better than before. Uh, if we admit that on these things we have potentially something to say, then we may be able to make proposals of interventions that might be useful, or we may also be able to identify other people's proposals and sort of rank them, see whether they are good or bad. We are doing that more frequently than coming up with our own solutions. But of course, we do get it wrong, because we keep sim we, in order to understand the problem, we need to model it. And so we need to simplify the reality to model and to analyze it. And therefore, we ignore important elements. So for some people, this is a reason to stay in the margin, even for some people who think that uh, the world could really be improved, but they think that there is too much potential for wrongdoing. I respect this position, but I don't share it because we are not the only one to get it wrong. Everybody gets it wrong. So it's a reason not for inaction. It's a reason for being extremely uh, uh, humble in term, uh, on your proposal. Always think that you probably got it wrong, but maybe you didn't, so maybe it's worth a try. And therefore, careful evaluation of programs. And I should point out that since we are not the only one who explicitly or implicitly are simplifying the world in order to analyze it and understand it. We are not the only one to get it wrong, and therefore this need for evaluation applies to everybody, and not only economists, and to policymakers in particular. Hence, I think there is no point staying aside and letting other people be wrong and say, well, of course, at least it wasn't me. I don't think we are doing everybody a favor this way. So if evaluation is so important, uh, why, why are programs not evaluated? So one hypothesis, which is something that uh, um, Alain Pritchett has, for example, expressed in an article called It Pays to be Ignorant, is precisely that. Programs are not evaluated because it pays to be ignorant. Nobody wants evaluation. Uh, the program supporters need uh, to show success. Uh, they need to be re-elected. They need a promotion. They need funding for their program. And therefore, there is a general tendency to over uh, overestimate success. Nobody is fooled, but since everybody overestimates, I should also overestimate, and the evolution, the equilibrium of that keeps moving right and right and right and right. I think it, we could analyze that in evolutionary game theory easily. So that's a possibility. I think, to be honest, I've, I've hit, I've been confronted in my short career as an evaluation person against when I presented some results where I thought the results were quite good of someone telling me, oh, but I can do much better. You cannot prove it because it's very subtle, but I can do much better. It's like, whatever. So it is not only, uh, it, is, it is clear that it's part of the world. Let's not fool ourselves. But I don't think it's necessarily the only reason. I am a little bit uh, less, more optimistic than that. I think uh, evaluation is rare just because it is difficult. So first, what's evaluation? So one problem when we think about social policy, why, is, why do we have to evaluate social program and not uh, uh, and why do people who build cars don't have to evaluate the, their cars? Social policy, in particular anti-poverty uh, policies, is necessary precisely when the market fails or, for some, or when, for some reason, we think we need to intervene on top of what the market is doing. For example, as a society, we might think that, uh, that we want every child to be educated, even if their parents cannot afford it, even if they cannot get loans, or even, for that matter, if their parents did not want to educate them. So there are some problems where we are just willing to spend the money. As a society, that's a decision we've taken, either because it's efficient or because it's fair. 